In this video, we will show you how to install your SideStack Honeycomb vertical application. First, install the brackets. Be sure that the two outside brackets are 8 inches from the jam. For any additional brackets, evenly space them out between the two outer ones. Then, remove the end plate and slide the moving rail bracket into the headrail. Reattach the end plate. Next, install the headrail by snapping it into place. Now we will prepare the fabric stack. Start by inserting the stationary rail bracket into the vertical rail on the side where the fabric stacks. Be sure that the bracket catch snaps into the hole on the back of the rail. Then, insert the stationary rail bottom bracket into the bottom of the stationary rail. Insert the bracket with the mounting flanges to the back, away from the fabric stack. Do not seat the bracket. About one quarter inch should extend from the rail. Once inserted, peel off the red label. Next, we will attach the rails and fabric stack to the headrail. First, insert the moving rail onto the moving rail bracket. Be sure to fit the bracket into both rear grooves. Insert the bracket until the bracket catch snaps into the hole on the back of the rail. Insert the fabric carrier wheels into the headrail through the notch on the end, compressing the foam block. If you need more slack, unwrap a small amount of cord from the orange cord organizer. The wheels with clear stems fit into the rear channel. The wheels with the black stems fit into the front channel. The wheels will only fit into the rail the correct way, so it's not possible to install them into the wrong channel. Hook the front of the stationary rail bracket onto the headrail. Gently move the stationary rail backwards to lock it into place. Once in place, you may allow the stationary rail to hang freely. Now, attach the stationary rail bottom bracket. The bracket may be attached to the sill or floor. It may also be attached to the jam using the inside mount adapter. Secure the stationary rail bracket using one of the provided small screws. Hold the bracket in place and screw through either of the two holes on the bracket. Next, we'll position the cords. Unwrap the cord from the orange cord organizer. Remove any twists by running a finger between the two cords. Place the washer on the end of one cord into the first slot from the rear on the inside of the end plate. Loop the cord behind the end plate back through the second slot from the front and pull it taut to seat the washer. Cut the washer from the end of the other cord and tie the cord to the cord tensioner. There are two cord tensioners in the headrail. One is a spare. Trim the end of the cord to about one half inch. Loop the cord from the tensioner around the second slot from the rear. The top of the loop must be the cord from the cord tensioner. Set the cord tensioner and remove slack from the cord by moving the cord tensioner away from the end plate it is looped around. If the tensioner must be moved more than one third of the headrail width away from its end plate to remove slack, retie the knot and trim the excess cord. Do not put tension on the cord at this time, just remove the slack. If the moving rail isn't straight, be sure to adjust it to be completely vertical. Locate the Phillips screws on the moving rail bracket. To adjust the bottom end of the moving rail to the left, loosen the left screw, then tighten the right screw. To adjust the bottom end of the moving rail to the right, loosen the right screw, then tighten the left screw. Repeat until the rail is properly aligned. Be sure to not over loosen either of these screws. Now tension the cord. One note, when the cord is properly tensioned, the moving rail slides easily, yet holds its position anywhere along its travel. Slide the cord tensioner along its channel in the headrail until the cord is taut. Fully open and close the fabric stack several times. This evenly distributes tension throughout the shade. If necessary, readjust the cord tensioner by sliding it until the cord is taut. Now we'll attach the valance. Position the bottom of the valance clip under the bottom lip of the headrail. Rotate the valance clip up to snap it into place on the top of the headrail. Keep a minimum of three inches between the end of the headrail and the valance clips. Insert the top of the valance into the top of the valance clip. Rotate the valance down to snap it into place onto the headrail. Tap the valance at each clip to assure that the valance is securely attached to the valance clips and the clips are securely attached to the headrail. 